Hi folks, it's Eric, the GM for Void Heart Symphony here. I just wanted to jump in real quick before the recording to let you know that, unfortunately, our first session was not recorded due to a technical mix-up. Uh, while we do make a few references to things that happened in the first session, it was mostly character creation and the player characters finding their feet. In addition, I do give a brief summary of the last session at the start of this episode, so hopefully things won't be too confusing. Thank you for watching, and again, apologies for any inconvenience. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Void Heart Symphony New Orleans, uh, loosely inspired by Persona uh, and powered by the Apocalypse. My name is Eric, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be the GM. Uh, Merrick? Uh, hi, my name is Merrick, as was just indicated. Uh, I am he, and I am playing Arthur Zoe, a heart from the Harlequin playbook. Also, the name of the game is... Void Heart Symphony, not Void Heart. I mean, the, the the game system is Void Heart Symphony, but not Void Heart Symphony New Orleans, which that's is what true. it sounds like when you just <laughs> said it a second ago. Okay. I guess that's our campaign title. I don't, I don't know, but to distinguish it from all the other Void Heart Symphony streams. <laughs> yeah, but don't Google this is the that only and one expect to find Orleans. the actual game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fair enough, uh, Byron. Hi, I'm Byron. I play uh, the Inhuman. I go by he, and so does my character. And my character's name is Arsu Taraz, or Arsu for short. Hey, I'm Tina. I, uh, she, her, uh, I play Athena Lee, the Authority. All right, excellent. Um, so to recap briefly, uh, originally uh, in our past session, our heroes awoke to find themselves trapped with a panopticon-like prison filled with despair. As they regained their memories, they gained keys that could shatter the cell doors that kept them trapped and allowed themselves to transform into their castle form. After escaping, they confronted the Warden, an avatar of the prison. After a fierce battle, they defeated the Warden and transformed the prison into their hideout, a hotel with rooms for each of them, a central lobby, and a small communal lounge off to the side. After coming to terms with their surroundings and unlocking their shadows, our heroes returned back to the real world, coming through a door located in an alley near a few restaurants in the French Quarter. You like how um, there are so many proper nouns in that description that it would be <laughs> essentially meaningless to someone who hasn't listened to the last episode? Because I do. Also, uh, if you're coming here from if you are coming here from persona because that's how this was advertised to you in this game shadows are personas and uh by which i mean shadow is like the equivalent of a persona the equivalent of a shadow from the persona series is i believe called a wraith <coughs> so yes look forward to that for the rest <laughs> of this <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> All the copyright reasons. Okay. I don't know. Like I get that. I don't know why they had to go and call one of the things still what it's called in the video game, but like <laughs> the opposite. You know, <laughs> that seems that seems rude to me. Seems a little obnoxious. Seems a little, uh, yeah, a little. It's one of those things perhaps. where it's like it's like with the earlier playbook discussion. We where it's like I cannot get into the mind of someone who would do it. Like, I can't understand why they would do that. <laughs> what at sort all. of monster? <laughs> yeah. Although it's entirely possible that it, the reason for it, like, because the last time that I had that sentiment about something powered by the apocalypse related, it turned out that it wasn't on purpose at all. <laughs> like oh. with the, uh, the one, you know, the thing that we talked about where it was like, why is it that all the powered by APOC things say that you can only have one character per playbook? Oh, and it's like it's I don't purely understand by chance, yeah. make that a rule. And then it turned out that like it's never been a real rule. Right. <laughs> yeah. like, just a like uh, a due to like printing limitation. <laughs> pretty pretty much. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> someone didn't want to print out extra playbooks at a convention. Uh, yeah. As all good decisions are made. Um, so yeah. So. Picking back up, um, I asked you guys to kind of think about um, where uh, a location important to your character would be on kind of this map, 
um, as well as uh, for your various, um, uh, sorry, uh, covenants, uh, social links, slash uh, confidants. And um, so, yeah, so, Merrick, I know you uh, established... Uh, I was about to say, yeah, didn't I do that at the end of the last one? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you established kind of an abandoned lot near your school that is both important to you and the Moon Arcana. Uh, What is the name of the Moon Arcana? I'm not sure I got that. Um... Oh, yeah, because I made because I was like, I'll think of it later, and then I did way later, uh, and I don't remember if it was. Oh, I wrote down Francis for the yeah, Moon Arcana. Francis the dropout. <laughs> Francis the dropout. Um, who I hang with? Yeah, it's a. It's not like a fully empty lot. Like it's like, it's like a building that was like heavily damaged in the like flood and mostly torn down but there's still like the occasional standing wall or like whatever there's like it's kind of like a it's like a basically just like fucked construction site because it was like theoretically we'll rebuild this building but in reality that's not happening (laughs) okay yeah i'm just making a note of that i like that that's good yeah there's lots of buildings like that out kind of towards where the levees broke um, at least the last time I was there. Uh, presumably no one has decided to rebuild them or knock them down since then. But uh, who knows? I kind of figured that, that, yeah, that there would be at least a few here and there where it's just like... Because that's like how, like, any time any building gets damaged for any reason, like if no one actually cares about it enough or, like, wants to do anything with the land, it'll just, like, stay busted, mm-hmm. like, in perpetuity. There's lots... Like not like, Oakland, to my knowledge, has never had a flood. But there's all there's there's yeah, lots. There's plenty of there's abandoned flooded. buildings. <laughs> <laughs> because like, no one's buying that shit. Nice, I like it. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, how about uh, Byron Tina for Athena slash um, Arsuteras? He called you on you both at once, so you both yes. have to talk. <laughs> well, I mentioned the arcade in the school because I've not been in this world very long, but those are important. Uh, I guess it's the noosphere, the psychological constructed world. Is there a name for that? Uh, I'm just going to call it the metaverse because I didn't think of a name. Uh, <laughs> right. I think it's yeah, sometimes so- referred to as the castle. Like the castle is the entire other world, but that doesn't quite like make sense to me. So, you know, we'll yeah. call it you know the cognitive world or the metaverse. Well, yeah, because aren't the castle? Wait, I thought the ca- I thought castles were equivalent to palaces. The like, castle they're, 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 like, they're, like, is the enti- locations. the castle is the entire sweep of all palaces, and an indi- an individual palace is a castle shard. Okay. Well, I can. I can get. We should. We should use the game terminology as much as possible because otherwise it's going to get confusing. Fair. Um, and like my fucking digressions into in Persona Five, blah blah blah, will get even more irritating <laughs> and numerous. Fair. If we like start switching between Van Horn, so like Castle and Castle Shard is internally. So, okay, we, sounds good. I think we should go with that. All right, we'll do that then. Um, so yeah, so an arcade is important to um, uh, Arsuteraz. What's Arsuteraz's Arcana again? Let me pull it up. Uh, the star, it looks like. Yeah, it's the same as um, as that character type is in all the present the Morgana and Teddy and like all those. Jokers are always star. They actually made more oh, the magician. But... Did they? I could have sworn. Who the hell's the star then? Um, star is the, the Shoji Fumi. player, right? Shoji? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so this arcade, uh, let's put it. Where, where, where are arcades usually? Um, we'll kind of put it near. Uh, commercial near... district nearby yeah. residential or uh, school neighborhood. Mm hmm. Yeah, we'll kind of put it towards the edge of the business district, kind of verging onto Uptown. 
call it the arcade. Um, okay, uh, and Tina for Athena. Okay, so yeah, so my contact was uh, a person I met on online game. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, okay, well, I mean, I guess for me to meet that person on that game though, which I, I, th I guess I named Draconic Rage on my notes. <laughs> nice, I like it. <laughs> Okay, uh, I would probably like, I mean, I'd probably hang out at home and play the game, or I'd go to a cafe, I guess, and play the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, either 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 way works, and either one says something very different about your character, whether or not you have to hide whether or not you play the game from your parents, presumably, and can't play it at home, <laughs> or, like, they let you play video games. Yeah, uh... I would probably just play at home, honestly. <laughs> it's okay. probably more reliable connection anyway. All right. Um, oh, no. Uh, one second. I don't know where the residential area is, though, for New Orleans. I'm just like, uh, museum district, business district. <laughs> uh, so it, it depends kind of on your socio not socioeconomic station. Um, mm -hmm. If you're, like, relatively well off, uh, it would probably be either uptown or the garden district. Um, if you're mm -hmm. more kind of like middle class, it would be probably Treme. Um, poverty would be, you know, uh, either Orleans Parish, uh, Lower Ninth. Metairie is like the suburbs. Um, okay. So, so yeah. I was thinking I'd probably have a part-time job to support my sibling in which case. I would kind of uh, low on money then in order to have a part-time job. But uh, you were, don't you go to a private school? Do we go to a private school, Merrick? I don't remember. I don't. But I thought that you said that you did because you had a school uniform or something. Oh, you're right. Which, like... Mm, maybe suburbs, then. That sounds kind of... Fine. Uh, well, private school student. could mean that has money, but maybe not the, you know, kiddo. Yeah. Maybe my parents control my money. <laughs> right. Um... Okay. okay, where the suburbs? Then we're in the suburbs, then, I guess. I mean, my parents could be well offish, and we just live in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. We will put I you out in the suburbs, suburbs then. Cool, thanks. Um, oh, I didn't zoom this map out. That's why I didn't see it. So that'll be the hermit, uh, Arcana. Uh, we'll oh, say it's mm -hmm. Athena's house. Uh, cool. Uh, as for a location that is specifically important to Athena, I guess, besides her house. Uh, I really like hanging out at a cafe because I have a huge sweet tooth. Nice. And I like buying snacks for my younger sister, I guess. Um, uh, that would be like in the French Quarter then area then, right? Yeah, usually. Um, one second... Find justice. There it is. <laughs> Wait. So yeah, it's nearby your hideout, so that works out. Um, we should actually dis decide where your schools are. Um, like, I know Merrick's is, by the pro process of association, I know it is near the abandoned lot near school. Um, yeah. Where would Athena's school be, roughly? If I go to a uh, pretty... If I go to a private school... Uh... I guess it'd be kind of near where I live then, right? Um, or... Yeah, unless... Uh, it, it's reasonable that she would, like, commute um, into, like, the museum district or something like that. Um, mm. There are private schools kind of scattered throughout New Orleans. Um, some of the nicer ones tend to be towards uh, the center of town um, or, like, kind of the uptown area. Uh, doo -doo -doo. 
it's in the uptown area. <laughs> On this map. Oh, I see it now. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm gonna put my school in the uptown area. That sounds kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have a good name for a Catholic-sounding private school? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do Catholic schools normally sound like? They're, they're usually, they're stuff, like, just named after, like, a saint or, like, one of the virgin mothers or something like that. Um, let me see if uh, Our Lady Guadalupe is a Catholic... I can look at a random saint name generator. Saint <laughs> you can also just... No one's going to know. We can just pick a real Catholic church. And do it. <laughs> we can also just make one up, like the Order of the Bloodied Thorn. Like, who cares? Oh, well, that's that would... That specifically sounds like a supervillain <laughs> cult, rather than like a... Um, but, that, uh, that seems like it would fit in Persona, just from what I've... Our Lady of Perpetual Bloody Thorns. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans Catholic Church. Uh, St. Augustine. There you go. Cool. St. Patrick's. Mean? Oh, wait. These are names of churches, not schools. But, like, whatever. It's the same. St. Augustine <laughs> Academy. There we go. Okay. Our Lady of the Rosary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so we're starting to kind of put together a map here uh, and have an idea of kind of the geography uh, as well as kind of how you guys would go about getting around. Um, there are trolley lines on Canal Street and St. Charles, um, and there's also buses that can take you pretty much uh, wherever you need to be. A lot more common uh, in the uptown area. It's much more easier to get around there. Uh, and the downtown area uh, as you start to move east kind of towards where uh, Merrick School is uh, it gets kind of harder and harder uh, as public transit and public funding starts to break down um, and you probably have to like walk for a bit or wait for like an hour or so to catch a bus um, so yeah that's just something to keep in mind uh, the next part is we talk about um, time passing and kind of what you guys get up to in your daily lives uh, as you've just kind of had this experience gone into uh, the world of the castle uh, found your hideout uh, discovered your shadow you've, you've been through a lot um, so the question is kind of like how do you react to that and kind of what do you do uh in your daily life to try and get back to some either try to get back to some sense of normalcy or try and figure out like more about what's happening to you so if anyone do has... we take it for granted that this did really happen like there are physical it... signs of it your key is still with you either okay. like literally on your body or if it's a physical object you still carry it with you so you know something happened uh-huh um and our pseudoraz definitely knows something happened because he's just a frog <laughs> <laughs> um it's true hmm. I've probably never been outside the metaverse have I this is probably your first excursion yes <laughs> I think Arthur would do his best to just sort of pretend that this did not occur and go back to regular life, mostly for lack of being able to, like, just out of like, well, I don't really know what to do about any of that. So I'll do nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so what what is Arthur's uh, typical life look like then? Um, just like the the typical life of a slacker student. It's like just kind of does the 
the bare minimum in all things is what his <laughs> whole deal is. Mm-hmm. So, um, just enough schoolwork to like keep straight C's. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of just hanging around also, and like, not like any, any kind of just hanging out with, uh, his friends, especially Francis that doesn't cost money. So nice. nice. Um, so lots of throwing, uh, rocks at buildings, <laughs> lots of, lots of naps, lots of naps and just like getting like, uh, maybe like a snack or a soda and sitting around and just bullshitting about nothing in particular for a long period of time. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, nostalgic almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, I dig it. All right. Um, as for, uh, what's, what's Athena up to as, uh, she kind of comes back from this experience? Uh, well, normally, I would be probably, like, studying at the library, so I'm going to the library, but I'm clearly, I, mean, I guess at school, but I'm clearly not going to study. I'm going to look up what the heck just happened, <laughs> mm-hmm. and hoping that maybe these, my private school texts can tell me somewhere in the library. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh... What would you find? You would find stuff, like, about, like... Um essentially mass hallucinations and like ideas of about like collective unconsciousness and things like that uh that kind of sounds similar to what happened to you but there's no book that says like castles in you uh your guide to exploring <laughs> the metaverse unfortunately okay look at mass hallucinations also, I, I had wings in that universe. Okay, I don't know. I, I go to a, oh yeah, a religious school. Maybe mm-hmm. I think that has something to do with it. Why do I have... What did I have down my straight? Yeah, why do I have wings? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mysterious. Maybe it could be a sign. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You could also just like okay. look up the story of Joan of Arc because that's your persona. Um is it? Did she say? I don't think we. I don't oh. think anyone but me named ours. Oh, I didn't not? name mine. I think okay. I just wrote down like those were the traits that I uh, sort of wanted to. Yeah. Use. Oh, but I know Merrick that you had suggested a name for mine though. Mm-hmm. I suggested a couple for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like the one the that I was that. trying to <laughs> upsell you on was Marinette. <laughs> Marinette was a cool. Uh, <laughs> um okay yeah so i'll get i'll look some stuff up um mysterious though i didn't get any clear answers yep fair enough mm-hmm. um what about Arsuteraz? what is uh he up to as he explores this strange new world known as reality <laughs> he probably gets adopted kind of like a bodega cat but he's a arcade frog the arcade frog uh, i love it yeah, they, they just see this like bright blue poison dart frog hanging out, kind of looking around. Um, but nobody gets sick when they touch him because he's well, he's not real, really. Mm-hmm. So everything's weird. So everyone likes him because mm-hmm. it's like, oh wow, that's cool. Um, <laughs> maybe he even becomes the mascot of the place, and he gets like this unending stream of gossip from all the people coming in and throwing their quarters away. Mm-hmm. Nice. I like it. It would probably be... This is in modern times, right? Mm-hmm. So the the more regular... Or like the... Like the... Probably the... the for any arcade that was actually like still alive, um, it would probably have a decently healthy fighting game scene mm. uh, during... Like there would probably be like some... If it was like a decent sized arcade, it would probably have, unless it was like, unless, and like, barring if it was one of those ones that I consider to be sort of more like just a game, like where it's just like claw machines and skee ball and whatever, like if it's like actual arcade game, arcade games, it probably, in order to like sustain itself, it probably has like minor 
weekly tournaments, it might have like a very, very faint Twitch scene. <laughs> of um, because uh, I do know that like even even like little arcade like from when I used to like follow some stuff, even like little like podunk arcades would still just because like they could would be like we're gonna put our like you know twenty person tournament up on Twitch and stream it at like eleven at night or whatever. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, it's up to you, Byron. Do you think the owner is tech savvy enough to give that a shot? Uh, it's not necessarily I'm... the kind of thing that would be run by the, like it just if just enthusiastic people. Oh, just like, like the guy who shows up and says, "I'm going to record a Twitch stream." Here. No, no, no. More along the lines of like, "Hey, man, can we run this thing at your place and oh. like do it, or et cetera. Like sometimes, sometimes like the owner. A lot of times, like arcade like actual owners or stuff will get pretty involved but it's entirely possible to be like a complete sort of grassroots thing <laughs> as well where it's just like we'll pay you to like sort of like either rent out the space or to like you know we can or like work out right. some kind of thing where like you get this cut of the the like we the entry fees or like whatever right right uh, i mean it's not important to my story it's not important like, I don't know what the scene is like in real arcades. I don't know what the scene is like in New Orleans. I don't particularly care because I don't see it affecting the story. Mainly just that he's there and he gets attention. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's going to be a re relatively regular place, it could, it would, like, it would maybe affect, like, what the vibe of the spot is. But mm -hmm. if it's not relevant, then it's not relevant, sure. Well, we can build it out. Um, it's a good idea to have, at least, in the back of our head, if we need it. Um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, you guys kind of generally go about your lives um, uh, with Athena trying to figure things out. Uh, Arthur pretty much ignoring what's going on. Our suitor as uh, hanging out in an arcade, maybe trying to come to grips with the new reality uh overhearing gossip kind of learning about the world from that um learning about kind of what's going on and that sort of thing um so yeah so the next part is called uh the grind uh and this kind of Ooh. gets into what troubles uh plague your character in the real world so uh, this is a roll. Um, it's a check against your highest, uh, I always mess up this word, gauge, um, your highest trouble gauge. Um, and how checks against a gauge work is you roll two dice. Um, if both results are higher um, than the current level of your gauge, uh, then it's a strong hit. If only one die shows higher, than your current gauge level, it's a weak hit. And if both are lower than the gauge, then it's a miss. Um, so yeah, so you'll look at your highest gauge or uh, if you have two that are at the same level, just pick one uh, and then you'll roll two dice against it. Does that make sense? Yeah, we should all have multiple ones that are tied at three, shouldn't we? Uh, some people right have four. Okay. Go ahead and fill that out now. Mm -hmm. All right, I just rolled 12. <laughs> uh, a six and a six. So, yeah, that's a strong hit. Uh, pretty much no matter what. Uh, so, on a strong hit, you're fine. You have no troubles. Uh, or if things do bother you, you're able to take care of them quickly without anything kind of uh, uh, messing up your life. Uh, what was your highest gauge? My, I have like, I have three tied at three. Oh yeah, what are they? Blood, infamy, and fealty. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll say it was probably um, blood, and it was just that you were kind of feeling uh, a little uh, overwhelmed by the experience, uh, maybe a little tired, um, but through your normal course of just slacking and sleeping and relaxing 
uh, you were able to easily kind of overcome uh, any exhaustion. Neato. <laughs> okay. For the trouble, they're default at three? Uh, or... No. Um, so what I have for you, Tina, is you've got three in blood, three mm -hmm. in heat, and four in fealty, and then two in lack and two in infamy. Two in infamy, three in heat. And then I have four fealty? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I roll against the highest trouble I have, right? Yeah, which would be fealty in this case. Okay, because I rolled a five. <laughs> okay, you rolled a five on one die. Or you, you rolled oh, a five. I rolled a five on two. So, total five. What, what, what I rolled was... a four and a one. Oh, you rolled a four and a one. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, on a four... Let me, let me just double check how this works. Because I feel... So, four is hitting it rather than going higher than it. And I just want to check and see if that's mm -hmm. actually the right hit. Dice mechanics. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's only over the result, um, so that would be a miss, um, <laughs> unfortunately. No, this is this is good because it actually gives us something uh, to work with. So, uh, in your case, uh, on a miss, same, but the architect makes an immediate move, showing how bad things can get. All right, so there's a trouble incoming, meaning that we start a maintenance project. Um, and fealty has to do with kind of like the risk of the castle noticing you and people kind of like taking notice of your, let's call them extracurricular activities. Um, so there is a, uh, tr your school essentially places you on probation um, <laughs> because you kind of just went missing for a few days and uh, you can't just skip class for a few days without someone noticing you. Um, so the school, you, you are called into, um, I guess it would probably be like the vice principal's office or a counselor's office. And they essentially say, you know, uh, Athena, your grades are excellent. Um, we've never had a problem with you. You know, all your extracurriculars are great. Um, can you tell us, you know, where you were? Uh, you know, your parents uh, were very concerned. Uh, the school, no one heard from you for a few days. Um, and we're just very concerned that maybe you're falling in with, falling in with a bad crowd or, um, yeah, we just, we want to know what happened. Um, hmm. <laughs> I wasn't home. Mm, I, I mean, I have to lie, of course, but <laughs> uh, you could you could be seen as crazy and tell the truth. That's true, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea is another matter entirely. Yeah, I probably will make up some story about how I wasn't feeling well and was hanging out with, oh God, a friend. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm, and God, how long was I missing for in real time? Like three days, a week, uh, a day. Th three after three days, they'd call the cops. So we'll say it was oh. just like a day. Yeah, probably that. I was hanging out with a friend. Uh, somehow horribly lost track of time. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the school but counselor, we'll call him Mr. Daniels, uh, kind of mm -hmm. nods and he says, look, I, I get it. You know, I was a teenager once too. I know it's fun to go shopping and, um, uh, uh, go to the local, um, hot spots are on fleek, um, <laughs> You Anyone know. who says who begins by saying I was a teenager once too is about to say some shit that highly suggests that they were not a teenager <laughs> once. Um, I, I know you probably have a girl squad, um, and this school 
fully supports, uh, you know, girl boss energy. Um, we, we're so we're just we're just slightly concerned. Um, so probation just means you know you have to uh, check in with us, let us know what's going on, and you know, uh, after a few weeks, it'll it'll be taken care of. You won't have to worry about it. Uh, oh, um, there's actually something uh, you could do for me if you don't mind. Um, uh, there's, um, a girl in your class, uh, Melissa Larson. Um, she actually, uh, kind of, uh, did the same thing. She ditched class with a couple of her friends and, um, apparently the police got involved and she, she hasn't been talking to us about it at all. She refuses to answer any of our questions. Um, she says, you know, she'll call, she'll have her parents call a lawyer if we keep bugging her about it. Um, but we just want to ma make sure that she's safe and she's okay. And, you know, the school isn't liable for anything that may or may not have happened. Uh, so if you could just like check in with her and see what happened, um, we would really appreciate that. Okay. I mean, that sounds doable. That sounds fine. Check in with Melissa Larson. Okay. All right. Great. Say hi. All right. <laughs> um, he, he kind of puts his fist out like, all right, pound it. Kid's still doing that. Found it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, I fist bump him. All right, nice. Good talking to you. You do it awkwardly or enthusiastically? Uh, really reluctantly. <laughs> Incredibly <laughs> reluctantly. He he's just happy you did it, um, <laughs> and he says, "All right, uh, you can go back to class now." Okay. So our is Melissa has... Larson in my class or? Uh, yeah, Just, she's like, um, I don't know what click, uh, Athena would be in, but she's kind of in like, I guess, uh, this is still a thing, like, kind of like popular girls, um, uh, that are not really super invested in their academic achievement, um, that come from very wealthy families and, uh, are kind of popular because of that um okay. so yeah a rich girl essentially not to stereotype people but <laughs> rich girl popular not with academics okay cool thanks um so yeah byron what did what did you roll for our suitor as i got two fives two fives all right uh so again you're fine um you as you're kind of hanging out in this uh arcade you hear kind of like essentially uh, not quite voices, but more like you get like the feeling of like goosebumps, except you're a frog. Um, and it kind of intensifies the longer you stay away from the castle world and stay in the mundane world. And you can kind of like, you see like essentially wraiths at the corner of your vision occasionally. Um, that seem to be beckoning you back to the castle uh, and offering you uh, essentially um, basically trying to convince you to turn your back on uh, what you've kind of embraced here in the real world or just trying to get you to come back to the castle proper. Um, what so book could they understand. possibly entice you with? That like that place well, is on. a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, like so I passed, and now I'm getting hallucinations that lead to penalties if I just like so if I say yes and I go back to the the castle, what happened? Um, I, I, the implication, the the next thing I was gonna say is like somehow you resist, right? Because like you get this trouble, but you're able to overcome it. Like, there's always a trouble, but it's just how you overcome it is kind of the role. Does that oh, make okay. sense? It does. Okay. So, how does Arsuteraz kind of overcome this particular trouble? I guess he remembers how shitty the castle was, and yeah. that he left for a reason. <laughs> That, you know he likes um he likes the feeling of the sticky floor of the arcade mm -hmm. um yeah yeah that makes sense 
Uh, I think Arsudarez is like very quickly becoming a very popular part of this arcade. Um, like there's a there's a marked uptick in business uh, just from like the people are already like clamoring for Arsudarez like plushies and things like that. Um, <laughs> and you have all the flies and or bugs or whatever frogs eat that you want kind of available to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, as for like kind of the gossip you over here, you hear a lot that, um, kids are really worried, especially if they're, uh, at the card, at the arcade during school hours. Um, they talk about how, like, um, you, you really shouldn't, uh, you should be really careful coming to the arcade or leaving the arcade because apparently the truancy officers have really been cracking down lately. Um, and some kids have gone effectively vanished off the face of the earth for all intents and purposes, either when they were coming to or from the arcade. Um, and uh, generally there's a sense of kind of nervous anxiety in the air. So would it be okay if like, while well, Arsu's investigating and getting more information that he gets kidnapped by some, by a rival arcade wanting some of that attention <laughs> I like it <laughs> a rival arcade owner um, Arsu's been black bagged mm -hmm. uh, yeah that, that sounds reasonable um, it's up to you how easy that is to get out of um, but uh, that can definitely happen um also, uh, Merrick, uh, Arthur, um, as one day when he's hanging out with Francis, uh, you essentially hear something kind of similar. Uh, like, some of your other, like, kind of more dropout friends, slacker friends, uh, have been not really um, ditching class as much lately. Um, and Francis warns you that uh, he's heard that essentially uh, the truancy cops are cracking down uh, and that Arthur should be careful. You know, I know you do the bare minimum, man, but like <laughs> the bare minimum has rise, has risen a, a, a small but significant amount <laughs> to keep um, from going to jail. All right. Well, I guess I'll have to, Wait, no, wait, hold up. Wait, can we say that this conversation is happening while we're just, like, lazing around somewhere? Yes. Uh, I'll be like, I'll, Arthur, think for a second. I got it. Reaches into backpack, uh, pulls out a book, opens it to a page, puts, like, a, a weight of some kind on it to keep it open there, pulls out a notebook, flips through it, opens up to a page that has, like, some writing on it, Takes a pencil, puts that in his lap, leans back, done. I'm studying. <laughs> 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 Fucking nailed it. Um, hey man, do you want? It? I got it. I got other notebooks and stuff in here. Hold on, here. This one looks like a good one. I just like throw him something. <laughs> <laughs> he catches it, picks it up, and he like starts. He he like takes out a few other like small objects of like like a piece of gum that's chewed up and like mm -hmm. um like some popsicle sticks or something or like he just he basically like goes around and like picks up some trash and like mm -hmm. uh assembles it into a very uh shitty model of a molecule and he says <laughs> check it out science project and he puts Yo. it down that's wild. You gotta hang on to that one. That's that's like that's the ace in the hole right there. <laughs> he says, "I thought so. I like it. <laughs> definitely, definitely." Um. So yeah, um, you all, uh, as you are kind of living your lives, uh, begin to have, um. Would it be okay if you guys like exchanged text numbers or something like that at some point? 
Does the frog have a phone? <laughs> the frog maybe does not have a phone. Hmm. So it would, it would be literally uh, just just us two. Um, I I think I feel like Arthur probably it probably would not have occurred to Arthur because like he sort of isn't like he he sort of he didn't really he couldn't really make anything out of what happened. But I don't know if it, so he wouldn't have like thought like, oh, this is something that I should, do whatever. In but, um, he wouldn't have withheld his number if, mm-hmm. if like asked about it. I guess so. Can we have like metaverse phones built into our keys? Hmm. hmm. Uh. Yeah. Maybe. Uh. Like it glows or something like that. Um. Or like you can literally like type on it. Um, hmm. I mean, we can telepathy it when it's like, yeah. Um, yeah. or get vague impressions mm-hmm. from them, perhaps. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, I like that. You all get the vague impression, or like a series of flashing images that basically shows you Harry, um, one of your teammates, uh, played mm-hmm. by Max essentially getting arrested um, and uh, like having like a brief argument with the cops um, and uh, getting like basically pulled off the street uh, into the back of a car, uh, into the back of a patrol car and having a bag put over his head um, and just kind of like essentially that's the end of it. Um, Mm. But it is, uh, not great to say the least um and the next kind of impression you get from harry is just like he's in um a very uh institutional looking building um like i'm not, i don't know if any of you have ever like been to uh, a juvenile hall but uh you could probably like figure it out from context clues that he's in some sort of juvenile hall holding facility something like that um and he's very concerned Hmm. that is a little scary to hear or i guess to have this vague impression (laughs) Uh uh arthur will oh i'm gonna say this happens while um or no actually yeah okay so that can, uh, there will be a, I'm going to say that there's some kind of sense that these images are emanating from the key, which Arthur has not stopped wearing around his neck, sort of forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So he will grab that and inadvertently broadcast to the team his thoughts at the moment, which are, of course, what the heck was that just now? <laughs> Or like that impression of, I don't know how how literal we're gonna go with the the phone keys, but mm-hmm. it's magical. We can go as far as we want. Exactly, it's magic. I don't have to explain shit. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, Arthur sent out a. I guess a thought <laughs> out yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did see the impressions, and then afterwards, I guess I sensed Arthur being like, "What the shit was that? Um, what am I doing? I is this happening during the day, or is it at night where it's more shady?" Um, we'll say it's like the afternoon. Like maybe it's after school. After school. Okay, so I guess I'm like. Uh, at the library, and then I sense this, and let's see. I don't. I wouldn't recognize what their juvenile hall is probably. So I was like, "Wait, where was, where was Harry?" But I'm worried because I can somehow sense that Harry is clearly worried mm-hmm. <laughs> about where he is. Harry's like, "I have no fucking idea," or <laughs> that impression is what comes to you. Mm. Yeah. So. Oh. But 
but I wouldn't know where he he would be either. So. Mm -hmm. Um. Would anyone recognize where Harry would be then? <laughs> Not. I don't think any of us. Yeah. Um, but maybe we could he, enter the after. metaverse and then come out where he is. You do you do you know that if it works that way? You're from there, right? <laughs> yeah, I I think it works that way because I was there, but now I'm here, so I can't also be back there because I'm here. So I think we can move between the places. Hmm. Um. That's. Uh. Well, I, I mean, know how to are we? Like <laughs> that is that sound that that does make sense, but I'm also like, do you? I mean, do you think that what we just saw was? real it was like a actually a real real thing and like do you think he's actually being held in whatever this place is or is that just like a like a premonition like it's going to happen or whatever well i'll, I'll try calling him on my key phone and i assume he doesn't <laughs> he does not answer no so, i mean that's kind of weird right like People also, you're in, a, answer there. you're in like a bag at the moment, right? <laughs> he, hasn't, he, hasn't seen, he hasn't felt like that is relevant to the conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I just Doesn't... I wanted to establish that real quick because it's very funny to me. <laughs> Frog, Shit, well, hey guys, what's up? No, I can talk now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you up? <laughs> um. I'm... I mean, the frog can be unconcerned, right? He just told us that he could te we could teleport places, right? <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> That's why he's like he's calm because he's pretty sure he can just warp out of here. And it's like if he came, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, mean? I can't leave. Um. Well. Uh. Oh, it'll also now occur to Arthur that he's just been like playing with this like key in front of his and like not saying anything in his trying for a minute and be like, um, and it's probably starting to look sort of weird. Maybe we should try to talk about what to do about this in person somewhere, <laughs> um, instead of via whatever is going on with this stuff. I don't know if I I don't know if I trust it. Yeah. Presumably we're it, we're it's only like it's like the gist is getting across, not like right, literal yeah. words. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. A desire yeah. to meet up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do agree we should meet up probably at our mysterious cool hideout. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Okay. So I All guess right. I commute over there. We'll convene there as soon as possible. And then I'm yes. going to make up some excuse of like... Actually, we probably don't. We, Me and Francis probably just bounce whenever we want, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he super cares. Well, yeah. you know. I mean, I think, it's, I think we're both used to just sort of like doing whatever we feel like at the time. So just if one of us is like, hey, I'm going it's not like oh what did, you don't want to just like sit here for longer <laughs> mm -hmm. uh as i'm commuting over there i'm just like oh wait arsu do you need a ride or anything i i think i'm good and i'll oh, okay. use the, i'll use the key as like a saw <laughs> to open up a little, a little uh, portal inside of the bag and then go through it <laughs> all right <laughs> Just cuts his way to the bag. bag. The key. <laughs> well, I'm assuming. Well, I wanted to make a portal with oh, the key, okay. and then yeah. I assume 
come back out, I have to go back where that portal came in. <laughs> you gotta go back in the bag. <laughs> nice. I like it. Hopefully, well, maybe they won't keep, when they find the bag is empty, they keep it. And they'll just leave it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> just wake up in a bag. <laughs> nice. I like it. Um, so, yeah. Um, you all can kind of commute uh, downtown. Uh, uh, downtown um, to uh, your hideout behind a cafe uh, in, in the French Quarter. Um, uh, as you do so, uh, Arthur, this would, this would probably most likely happen to you. Um, a patrol car uh, for New Orleans PD just kind of like drives past you as you're. Well, how how, how are you getting to the location? I assume you're just uh, walking, but yeah, I probably or like taking. I don't remember if it's far. I guess I'll jump on a public transit thing of some kind because mm-hmm. it's near. Um, because the place it's in it's in like a fairly happening spot, yeah. as I recall. So it should be easy to get to via public transportation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. You have to walk a few blocks to, like, get to a bus stop to, like, take you there. Um, mm-hmm. And as you're doing so, uh, a New Orleans uh, Police Department car just kind of, like, rolls by you. Um, and uh, they just kind of do, like, the little whoop thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And they roll down the window. Uh, and you feel the key around your neck, like, glow hot against your skin. And uh, one of the cops says, hey, kid, where are you going? Uh, I say the name of the, the restaurant that I'm going to because I'm kind of frazzled and just like actually answer with like the first place that it's like because like I'm, I'm thinking about where I'm going. So I just say that mm-hmm. I don't think if we named it like the one that's that the alley is behind. All right. Uh, he kind of like frowns, like he wasn't expecting you to have an actual answer. <laughs> he says, "All right, well, don't stay out too late. Curfew's nine o'clock." <laughs> he just I, like, made that up. <laughs> yeah, also, I also look at my phone because I'm pretty sure it's like three in the afternoon. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then, like, I looked at my phone, and then I, like, look at him. <laughs> Not with, like, any, with just, like, a kind of, like, again, sort of a frazzled of, like, what what could you possibly be trying to communicate with that information here? <laughs> and you hear his partner in the car say, like, dude, Torres, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, never mind, <laughs> never mind. Just keep driving. And he kind of does, like, the uh, my eyes on you gesture to you like <laughs> vaguely trying to intimidate you maybe uh-huh. and then rolls up the window and drives away huh. all right <laughs> <laughs> all right then um so yeah so you all arrive back in the french quarter um your keys uh allow you to go through um the back alley door to your actual hideout um where are you guys going to talk about this? Probably in the lounge, right? Yeah. All that right. sounds easy. Um, does Harry or does uh, Arthur mention any any what happened to him? Or does not, do none nah. of us know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. It's not yet relevant, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you all uh, uh, gather in the lounge. Uh, there's maybe some soft piano music playing from somewhere. Um, how, how do you guys like hang out in this lounge? Do you like gather around a table? Do you sit on couches? What's the deal? There's um, a comfy armchair that I immediately steal. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait. This is the lounge, right? Not the lobby. Yes. Oh, um, lounge. Mm, I'm sure there's a comfy armchair there too. Yeah, there probably are. I would yeah, take. Yeah, this is Arthur's space. <laughs> yeah. I would take some... Well, that's the thing. It actually isn't... Because I I have my own apartment that we haven't been in yet and that I may not... Or my own, like, floor, I guess. And that I and that I may never go to. Cause I, <laughs> it's a bit like your actual house. It'll never become relevant. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I will also pull up a comfy armchair, and I will pull up one of the other, like, smaller regular chairs to put my feet up on and flop in those around, like, yeah, kind of adjacent to the table that we're meeting at. And I will also, well, if we're waiting for our suit, if we're, if we were there first, I'll go, man, I hadn't actually been back here since, uh, that time. I sort of forgot that it existed. <laughs> uh, I mean, I haven't been back here either. Uh, I've been busy. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I would probably what? tell being on probation. <laughs> What? How are you, are you on probation? Aren't you like, I mean, you seem like the kind of person who would, you know, be pretty good at. Stay, you're like nobody would. I, I'm like trying. I'm. I'm. Arthur's realizing that he doesn't have like a complimentary way of saying like a goody two shoes, even though he doesn't <laughs> <be> insulting. <laughs> you, you, you don't seem like someone that people would want to mess with. Yes, but the last time uh, we were here, I was missing for a full day, and everybody was concerned. Mm. Over a day? Huh. I mean, it was a day, right? It was 24 hours for you also, right? <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't just like, I was gone for a day, and you were gone for an hour. <laughs> Arthur was gone for two weeks. No one noticed. No. <laughs> I was like, like, upon you mentioning that, Arthur would be like, hmm. Well, you know, I guess I don't actually know. No one said anything to me. Maybe I was a, Maybe it was different for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no concept of time, and I've been inside an arcade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, every suit now, right? Because we were just chilling and waiting for Arsu? Or... Oh, no, Arsu's been He's here the here whole now. time. <laughs> he just chooses to reveal himself. Crawls out from a lily pad. <laughs> yeah. Or jump in somebody's drink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, How do you get a drink? Were, were there but, yeah, the bar is closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. You, you haven't bought the bar upgrade yet. <laughs> we need sixteen consciousness points to upgrade the bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unlock. Uh, someone brings you your drink. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, I guess, uh, I don't know. Um, I guess you have to bring up the fact that uh, we saw something, and that's why we're all here. Or we sensed something with Max, yeah. or not Harry. It was Harry being imprisoned in some place. It didn't look like where we were before, but I guess it could have been somewhere like that. Um, I don't know. You, RC, you seemed like you were from that place do you know if they had other uh other uh prisons that looked like where we saw harry yeah there's actually one prison for each of us it's crazy hmm Hmm. if you want to go i'm sure we can find him using his key well uh Arthur like sort of looks around now about that um are we sure that the best thing for us to do is to try to like play hero here I mean maybe we could get somebody else to like help out or something Arsu pulls out a little notepad yeah who else do you know this is exactly the question that Arthur was hoping to dodge. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I don't personally that, but I'm sure uh, you two probably know some uh, competent individuals who'd be like all kinds of gung ho about rescuing some some guy, right? Uh, I don't. Hmm. Actually, wait before before I answer this question. Uh, for regarding my probation, what were the terms of it again? It was that I you have can't to check leave anywhere. Or? No, you have to check in with the school occasionally, and you kind of got mm. the sense that they're just gonna ask you to do shit occasionally, and like if you say no, 
the probation lasts longer. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, let me mark that down. Uh, do I know people now, though? Hmm. Do I trust anybody? <laughs> Uh, who the heck would I even talk to to figure out to, to figure this out? Um, your friend from an online game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, friend from an online game. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> uh, yeah, my contacts are not. So it sounds like <laughs> Athena yeah. just goes quiet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like thinking. <laughs> Arzu looks a little disappointed when he puts his uh, pen and paper back. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I, you know, I keep peddling secrets to this priestess over in the metaverse. We could talk to her, see what she knows. Uh, yeah, I think I heard somewhere once that, like, knowing is half the battle, so we should try to know more things, for sure, before we go and do anything, uh, dramatic. All right, well, I'll take you there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Cool. How... Wait, how does getting around in this place work? Because don't we come in through the... Are we coming through the door in the lounge, which is the one that connects to the real world? Where's the front door to our hotel go? Uh, the front door to your Whatever. hotel usually goes uh, to the exit that you picked, Merrick. Oh. Okay. Wait, so how do we get out into, like, the wider castle? Uh, it's a hotel. There's lots of doors. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. Do you literally any door except for the front door go to the rest of the castle? Um, we keep opening random doors and not finding the one we want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, presumably um, our Sudaraz knows his way around the castle enough to know how to get to, um, I assume you're trying to get to your contact, uh, the, um, the sprite, right? Yeah, I figure that the way it works is if you use a key on a door, it'll take you towards where you want to go. Mm -hmm. But that's only for places that you've been to before. Yeah. Let's go with that. I like it. Yeah, so I'd go up to the front door and um, put the key in, open it, and instead of going to the real world like is expected, it goes uh, to, the, to the Sprite's palace. Mm -hmm. ah. Or Shard. Uh, it's... we'll, we'll say hideout because this sprite is like, kind of got, it's kind of like our suitor has got one foot in the, uh, palace, one foot out or one foot in the castle, one foot out kind of, um, okay. Byron, do you have an idea for what this room looks like? Yeah, it looks like, uh, one of those really old fancy libraries, mm -hmm. um, but it's a cylinder instead of like a rectangle. Uh, so the sprite sits on a little elevator chair that goes up the entire length of the cylinder, and there's just books and books and books of secrets mm. and scrolls and all kinds of stuff spilling everywhere. Okay. Uh, as you, I, I assume all three of you go through this door with our suitor as, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, we're here to investigate. Um, what's kind of the initial reaction of Athena and uh, Arthur to this new area? It's a bunch of books. I'm pretty excited. I'm just like, whoa, and I gasp, and I, like, go up to these books. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm more interested. Books, books? <laughs> I'm more interested in how he did the thing with the door. <laughs> <laughs> As, like, if, as if to thwart you personally, the door closes behind you and then vanishes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, this uh, this small sprite-like creature on this chair, the chair kind of like whirs and buzzes, and he says, 
Oh, our suitor is that you down there? Of course, it's me. Who have you been buying from other secret sellers? D no, we 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 have a very exclusive arrangement. Um, I would never, of course not. Um, I see you've brought friends, and like the chair kind of whirs and buzzes and like goes down, and then he gets off the chair and like kind of starts like flitting very rapidly between Arthur and Athena, like kind of checking you out from all different directions and says, hmm, they don't smell like uh, wraiths or the castle. Well, smell a little bit like the castle. They are these mortals. Did you did you bring humans in here? Where'd you find humans? They're, they're in this this weird place that has a lot of smells. Um, they call it like the real world. I don't get it. The real world. I hmm. I think I've got a book about that. There's like a... I would refer to a scene. It seems it makes us seem kind of like pompous when he puts it that way, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I'm like guiltily trying to put the books back that I was taking out to look at. Yeah. Oh no no no! Everyone. <laughs> No, no, no. It's a, it's a free library, uh, uh, human. Go, go ahead. Look to your heart's content. Can you, can you read? <laughs> I've got several books in. <laughs> I like take a book out. I open it. It's just like illegible, and I just put it back again. <laughs> <laughs> the book screams at you as soon as you open it. <laughs> I'm like inching away from the books now. I'm hanging out with uh with Arthur now. Hmm. Oh, that that one's that one's just grumpy. Uh, don't don't worry about that one, dear. You, th there's plenty of nicer books over in the uh, the children's section. Um, but yeah, <laughs> humans. This is this is really quite something. I haven't I haven't seen one of you since the um, what was it? Um, the thing where a lot of you were dying. Um, and you had these horrible boils all over your faces. Um, what was that, Arsuteras? Do you do you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the 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 blick plog. The Blick Plog. That's what it was. Nice. Um, so yeah, humans. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what brings you to my little, my little slice of the castle here, Arsuteras? We're missing a friend, and you know, bringing you this delicious novelty of humans for the first time in years, years. Yeah. Uh, to trade you for information on where our friend is. Oh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, a friend. Um, what kind of friend? Like a like a skeleton, or like a bird, or like um, uh, a chandelier? Uh, he's got, he's a lot, so so he's got a skeleton. Mm -hmm. Also got like, golden uh, If I may interject, but... he's another of us mortals, actually. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so you guys have skeletons too? We do. Uh, we're, we got all we we've, we've got a bunch of, of different uh, uh, bits, I guess you could say. Right. Humans are complicated. Right, right. I think I remember that. Well, um, hmm. I mean, I've got I've got spells to find skeletons, um, and I've got spells to find blood, um, and I've got a book, um, a book about uh, mentalities. Maybe, maybe I can help you find your friend though. Here, let me see. Uh, and he kind of like buzzes around on his chair, uh, pulling out different books, scanning them over, looking around. He says, oh, I forgot. And he buzzes back down. He says, um, like humans have, humans have something else. They've got like, um, they got like words that like mean them, but not th like, not the, not, not all the human, but like one of the human. It's like a word specific to the human you're talking about a name that's it oh. <laughs> uh yeah his name is scary and actually now that i think about it um this thing i like take my key gave us and give us like a impression of him a little bit ago maybe it can i like to start shaking it come on come on do it do it again <laughs> Uh, he kind of like looks at the key and he says, "Oh, oh, your key holders. Well, that makes things a little bit easier." Hmm. Your friend got a key. He should. Yes. <laughs> okay. We all got one when we escaped from the uh, warden. 
I guess it could have been taken from him though when he got got by whoever got him. Come on, man, do the do the do the wild. Come on. Wait, Still I have a question him. though. Okay, with the key holder, what is a key holder? Oh, that's what you are. You're a key holder. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm clearly not happy with the answer, but I'm just like, okay, well, it's not wrong. <laughs> our our, our knows all about that stuff about you know the keys and the castles and the you know the the wraiths and the you know the the gradual sinking madness that may drive you insane unless you free your city from the forces of darkness he'll 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 catch up on what? all that <laughs> sprite giving away information is like pulling teeth <laughs> it just won't do it it's he it puts everything on me and I like it I like the attention so that's why I'm here. <laughs> nice. I'm like mouthing the word "what" to uh, to Arthur, who's clearly not noticing me. Yeah, I'm not really paying attention. To it. <laughs> Still shaking the key. Um, <laughs> well, I, I've, I've kind of given up on that. No, like, like the last putting... couple times you do it, like little bits of like blue sparks or something come out, and you you have no idea if that's related to anything. Uh, Sprite says, okay, but, um, yeah, yeah, I can find a key holder for you. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. And he, like, kind of, like, races up again, grabs a few books off, uh, shelves, takes them back down. He, he's got, like, a little table in the center of this library that he starts, like, spreading them out on and, like, checking various graphs and various things like that. Um, he says, okay, okay, okay. Um, so, well... So I can tell he where he is in time. He seems to be in the prime timeline, beta six three two. That that that's where that's where you all guys come from, right? N none of you are from like, you know, mirror dimensions or anything like that. Uh, RC uh, raises his finger, thinks better of it, and then puts his hand back. <laughs> Okay, so so he's still in your timeline. That's good. That's good. Um, do, do you want to know like um, how close he is to the sun? Which 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 stellar uh, body should I try and figure him out in relation to? I was wondering if you could tell us how close he was to this hideout. <laughs> to this oh, so you mean like going through the castle to get where he is oh 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 um let me see let me pull some stuff down and he like starts like goes off again gets some more books pulls them down he says "Ooh, yeah he's uh wow he's deep in there right he's um yeah he's he's definitely in a castle shard um well so so well our pseudoraz has explained this all to you right like that you know, there's a castle shard in our world, and then there's, like, the mundane piece of the real world that, like, connects to the castle shard, and, you know, it's transformed by the cognition of the bearer, and, you know, our, our, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just, like, repeating stuff Arsu's probably told you already, but, um, yeah, he's he's in the, the mundane um, cognition, he, he's in the place where the cognitive version of the castle shard would be in your world in your timeline. Yeah. So what's that, uh... like 10 blocks? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I, well, you need, you know, you need a, you, you need a key to get into a, into a castle shard, right? Um, and your keys aren't, like, attuned yet to uh, whoever the avatar of that particular castle shard is. Um, so you'll need to do that first. Um, and that'll get you into the castle uh, shard, and you can like move from your hideout to that one whenever you want. Um, but you know you need to figure out what the cognitive distortion is of you know the actual avatar or like who the vassals. Sorry, not the not the avatar, the vassal, the the vassal in your world. Um, so we is... find the real human who has the other real human. Yes. And with then they both have skeletons. <laughs> How is does that attune us to them if we just find out who they are? Find out who they are, find out how they see their distortion. Uh 
I like hold up my key gingerly, and then what do I do after? <laughs> do I speak to the key? Uh, you just you know use it to open a door, think about where you want to go, and you're there. All right, I'm like looking that very overwhelmed. <laughs> But so, well, um, um, so you guys have skeletons. Do you have any um, bones by any chance on you? Can you have a skeleton without a bone? <laughs> I mean, <Exoskeleton. laughs> I mean, I assume, but like, like you probably need most of your bones. I'm just wondering if you have like other people's bones or other things' bones. Mm, no. no. Okay. Well, I'm just inching away. <laughs> I mean. You know, if you're gonna come back, maybe it's polite to like bring a gift, maybe some bones or something like that. I, you know, don't want to put any pressure on you. Just letting you know. Sprite, you're doing it again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, that was probably rude. Um, I'm just saying, I gave you a little bit of information. Uh, you want some more, more information back? You come back to me. Maybe give me a gift. Maybe you know, give me a memory. Give me some bones. Give me some blood. I'm just saying. <laughs> sure, we'll keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna try yeah. out how the thing because I haven't actually I haven't actually given the key a shot yet, so if you don't mind. I'm gonna just and I just like stick it into the the wall and in base. I just think of I think of our hotel basically. Um, you can't stick it into. A, he says, uh, you 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 need a door. The uh, the, there's a door right. And he, like, snaps his fingers and, like, a door appears in front of you. Ah. Of course. All right. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I leave. <laughs> yeah, you leave. I'm, like, you're, following Arthur right out of there. You're back in a hotel. Uh, uh, Sprite says, hey, how you, how you doing, Ar Arsidra? Is uh, every, everything going good in the the real world for you there? Well, some some guys put me in a bag and then took me somewhere. Ah. But then I had to go here, so. Ah, a, good, a good old kidnapping, I see. Well, you know, have fun with that. Is that what that is? I think oh. so. I think I think that happened to me once. Uh, it was like some druids or something like that. Uh, they wanted to use me in some sort of rite. Uh, it was, you know, it was it was kind of fun. It, it got boring after a while, so I dipped. But, um, yeah. Just, you know, um, it was good seeing you. Oh, it was good seeing you too. I'll bring you some zesty secrets next time. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, always, always room for more secrets in uh, Sprite's library. Okay, and the rest of you, uh, I assume, go back to your hotel. Mm -hmm. We've been chilling here. I've been like <laughs> sitting, shocked in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like flopped down. It's a, ah, well, this got a lot more complicated. Hmm. Maybe we ought to hire a private detective. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a private detective? I'm sure there's places you can look that kind of thing up. Let's see. Uh, what do we even say that we're looking for? Some guy has our... Some person has our friend. Uh, we so, know he thinks of himself as a vassal. <laughs> uh, or something. He, he's I, the I jailer. Of, like, the, uh, like the warden when we first met over here. Mm -hmm. ah, that's right. Wasn't that guy... Didn't that guy turn into like a real guy after we were fighting it was someone that harry knew i think yeah he recognized him weird because i mostly just saw lots of goop <laughs> hmm hmm uh... so do you think we're looking for another goop person be goop over here in the meta they'll be, probably be like bone and stuff in the air quotes real world dang uh, you get a lot of goop people in here 
so just to just to recap um, real quick, the warden, the real version of the warden was named Ron Sarver, and he was a teacher um, at the school where Harry and Athena both go to. I'm Ooh. or Harry used to go to or something like that. I will oh. point out that typically schools keep tabs on their students if they just like stop showing up or you know things like that. So that so that's a potential option. Uh huh. Okay. So I mean, if if he goes to my school, then I would probably recognize him. Actually. Harry. Yeah. Oh, the Ron Sa- Sawyer. Ron Sarber. Um, Sarber. Yeah, you haven't seen him at school though recently. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind then. Maybe I don't know him. <laughs> He no no you you know him or you knew him. It's just he hasn't been at school lately and no one's been talking about it. Mm, okay, I see. So I guess what you guys are what you guys are all talking about. Um, I, I can mention that it's Sarber from the school, but that I, of course I haven't seen him recently. Um, but we could go to the school oh i could go to the school to see if sarber what sarber has been doing lately maybe that sounds like an excellent idea uh, like an infiltration should... and he pulls out like a little burglar mask and puts it on <laughs> uh, i look at my phone i think the school should just still be open right now <laughs> okay so i, I guess they'll have any trouble getting into there probably yes um i'm assuming i drove myself here (laughs) or did i take a public bus you if it's in the didn't i i said that i that this was near that square right uh yeah um you would want to have taken public transit to get here yeah (laughs) okay it's it's hard to drive around center city new orleans Mm, okay. And even so I guess harder we to all push. get on the bus together. <laughs> I don't think I don't. Yeah, I don't. I'm thinking about that area, and I don't remember there being legal parking for like. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is it. <laughs> all right, so we all bus together, bus montage. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. I will actually hang. I will be like, well, it looks like sounds like you've got a plan. Uh. You go do that. I'm gonna. I'll. Uh, I'll. I'll. I'll just uh, chill out here, to, you know, hold down the fort and stuff. Uh, You're chilling at the hideout. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't go to that school, and like, I don't know anybody there, so I don't think I would wait, be. Arthur doesn't go to the school. <laughs> 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 okay. Maybe. Um. Would I even want to exchange numbers with uh, Arthur here? <laughs> so our ma- our magic uh, key phone can uh, tr- apparently transmit messages and stuff, right? Maybe I don't need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we all. Uh, so then I, I tell Ar- Arthur that you know if if uh, we hear anything, we'll contact you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like to that's... start settling in for nap time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and Arsu get on a public bus together <laughs> do i have to Arsu's like, in hide? a bag <laughs> like as soon oh, as in a bag <laughs> yeah rc is not near you at the moment <laughs> like okay y- you can ask rc hey do you want to get in my bag and he'll be like i'm in a different bag probably right byron <laughs> that's right it's black and it's kind of rough not the best why are you in a bag that you don't like uh, some like, rough-handed humans picked me up and put me in it when no one was looking. I think what? Sprite said that was napping. What? <laughs> Do you need help? Am I in need... danger? Uh... <laughs> 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 Wait, so you can leave the bag whenever you want then, right? Yeah, but only to go to the palace. Uh, it's a real sounds... world key. This is a meta key. That sounds uh, good enough for now. <laughs> Wait, so how going... I meet you at the school? But you're you're going back to the real yes, world. Yes, we're gonna bag now, it. 
Don't he go back in the bag? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. I don't think a detour and have to like break. Uh... Well, why don't you head to the school? I'll figure out something on my end. Oh, that's true. Arthur's gonna be like just super unconcerned. Oh, I'll be fine. I'll meet you there. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So I can uh, I just let us know if you need a hand out of the thing. But, um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just bewildered the entire time I'm like commuting back. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, when you guys leave uh, the hideout and go back to the real world, um, you've lost some time. It is now oh, the man. next Monday morning. Um, so how this works is uh, as you investigate the world, um, you can choose to do... Uh, basically two things for free each day. Um, if you don't spend at least two actions, so you get like four actions. If you look at this uh, character keeper, um, do you guys all, all have access to it? Let me copy a link in so I can see. Oh boy, they've changed the interface slightly. Okay, that's fun. So yeah, uh, as you can see here, um, there's like four stages to each day. Um, mm -hmm. And if you spend two units of a day, like uh, basically attending to your real life, there's no consequences. Um, if you spend more than two units of a day, like doing other things that aren't just living your life, like going to school, basically keeping up your commitments, um, there's, you have to like, kind of like tick something up or there's like a slight consequence to it effectively. Um, so that's kind of like what keeps you uh, uh, from like, kind of just like blitzing the investigation, so to speak. Hmm. Um, but your investigation will always start on a Monday morning. Um, and yeah, you'll, you kind of like lose time. Uh, we'll say you were probably uh, there on a Friday and you just kind of like missed the weekend uh, when you get back but like no one sees you as missing like no one's calling you up and being like hey where were you um mm. but yeah uh you come out of the uh you, you come out back into the real world our pseudoraz probably doesn't like super realize it um you our pseudoraz you actually wake up in just like a uh if you're okay with it a um a tank like what, what is it called? A terrarium, right? Uh, yeah. In a different arcade um, where you have been deposited. And it seems to be um, a much more extreme arcade. Uh, it's essentially a Dave and Buster's. Uh, and there's a lot of loud, drunk people here. Uh, and it's kind of annoying. And your terrarium isn't as nice as the lily pads and fountains in your last arcade. Um Tino, when you being come... left outside and not, I, I liked be, not having a terrarium much better in the old arcade than being confined in a box in this arcade. Exactly. Uh, Tina, Athena just like comes back out and like you check your phone and it's you know, eight a.m. Monday morning. Oh frick! I gotta get to school. <laughs> it was a Monday morning, mm -hmm. and I can't risk uh, my probation. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, how far do you get from the hide? How far do you get from the hideout to the? Uh, that's kind of far on the map, actually. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to boogie. Yeah, uh, and school starts at now. I'm assuming. Uh, nine a.m. Nine a.m. Okay. Uh, I I book it. <laughs> I <laughs> I run to the nearest bus stop and hope it's a bus is there. Uh, yeah. Um you kind of catch it just in time uh, and it takes you to school uh, as quickly as it can. Um, Thank goodness. <laughs> which is kind of slow for a bus, but what are you going to do? Uh, how do you spend uh, your Monday morning at our Cedar Ass? I'd spend my Monday morning like testing my captors and like trying to escape and pushing out 
all the pieces of the terrarium and that and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, do you want to like literally try and escape, or um, is this more just like kind of uh, you, you're just seeing kind of like how they react if you try to escape? No, I need to go. There's there's investigations to be done. I'm not going to learn anything trapped in this box. Okay. Uh, it sounds like that might be a move then. Um, I'm going to call it uh, essentially, let's see, doo -doo -doo, mundane moves. Uh, you pass beneath notice to kind of sneak out, or you can make a stand to bust your way out. I'm going to pass beneath notice. Okay. Uh, so you check against infamy. So, again, you roll two dice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, infamy? Infamy, yeah. Which is three on yours, I believe. So in the real world, do you test against troubles? Yeah. Okay. Uh, total eight. Okay. Uh, what what are the two dice results? Four and one. Four and one. Okay, so that's a weak hit. Um, so uh, on a weak hit, pick two. You have to leave this situation right now or be discovered. Uh, someone suspicious of you, and you won't be able to dodge them next time, or you get separated from your allies or pulled out of position. I'll pick, I have to leave the situation right now, and someone is suspicious of me because uh, I'm a poison frog that escaped from the poison dart frog tank. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do, how do you literally do it? I mean, I think the way that I literally do it is that it's built for, I'm guessing they didn't have an actual poison dart frog thing and bought like a fish tank. Yeah. And expecting the frog to have like intelligence. So I just like climbed up with my sticky pads and just lifted the lid a little bit I, and slipped. I like to imagine that you actually just that it's like actually an open thing and they didn't know how high frogs can jump. And just, like, <laughs> jump out too, yeah. And now they know that because <laughs> mm -hmm. why would they? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um Mark that you have made an enemy of this arcade owner. What what what, can, what should we call this arcade that tried to kidnap you? Um. Uh, probably like Nub Stompers, no. something wildly out. Of... I like. I would. I think this one should actually be a Dave and Buster's. I think that's funny. Uh, Bave and Dusters, for the yeah. reasons. <laughs> Did we name the other one? I forget. Yeah, something da Jangle Dangle. I saw it earlier. I think it might be on the map. Uh, I do. I, I did not name the arcade. Did you have a name for it? Double Double Jangle Arcade. Oh, is that what it was? After the sound of the coins in your pocket. Ah, uh, I get it. I like. I it. like that. I like imagining now also because it's also got sounds and stuff. I bet it has like a kind of a like a a bunch. It's like decked out in maybe in a like Japanese good luck. Like kind of felt like there's a ton of those waving lucky cats and stuff like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's got like koi, probably not an actual koi pond, but probably like paintings of like koi artwork and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, also, now that it has a rivalry with this place, I'm yeah, that'll be interesting, maybe. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I like it. Um, so does Arthur just kind of spend his the equivalent amount of time to one morning in the metaverse? Does he spend it just kind of relaxing? I do not know how time passes in this. So yeah, I'm just I'm figuring that it'll probably just take them like you know an hour or something. So <laughs> nice, I like. I'm it. just like hanging out. Maybe I do even actually like a little homework or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, just yeah. out of boredom. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we move to the afternoon. Uh, what does Athena do this afternoon? 
Okay, so I'm assuming I have nothing else to do for my probation thing. Uh, afternoon. They asked I... you to talk to Melissa Larson. That's oh, that's right. I I need to go talk to Melissa Larson then. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I decided that after school I approach her. Um, she's vaguely popular. She probably has a lot of friends hanging out with her. Uh, yeah, she's Can got a click. Click. That's okay. I just walk right up. <laughs> right up to her. Uh, I want to get this over with, so I'm just like, Hi, Melissa. I'm Athena. Um, is there a way I could talk to you? I, um... My, my dog ate my homework. I'm looking bewildered. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so that's why I don't have it. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, does your dog normally eat your homework? Yeah. All right. I. So, bye. All right. I mean, I talked to her. I. <laughs> I'm just like looking after her. She walks away from me, just like what? <laughs> What did what did the counselor want from me? Uh <laughs> So do you go and report that to the counselor? Uh yes, I mean that's that's all the counselor asked me, talk to Melissa Larson, and I did, and all Melissa told me was a dog ate her homework. Okay. Which um, a dog normally does. Okay, Athena, mm-hmm. I I need you I need you to work with me here a little bit. Um No problem. I need you to like talk to her like kids talk you know rap with her figure out why basically what happened with her and the police and her friends i i want you to get to the bottom of that okay can you you do me for that do that for me athena yes so i guess i go back after her uh what are my notes on melissa oh i didn't know she was involved in the police though yeah, the police picked her and her friends up for shoplifting, um, but uh, they bounced when she, she when her parents threatened to call a lawyer. Oh, okay, I see. Let me mark that so I don't forget. Um, yeah, so I guess I run after her, and I'm just like, hey, uh, look, I just want to talk to you more. Can you tell me more about, uh, I don't know, I don't want to ask directly. Uh, how how's school going for you? What? Look, what what was your name? You had some weird name, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Athena. Athena, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So, I've never talked to you before. You never talked to me before. Um, why don't we why don't we just keep that going? That that felt like a good relationship for us. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know what I want to say. I, I want to. I just want to get to know you better. I think we can be friends. I'm like really awkward about this. Um. Okay. Uh, this sounds like a move of some sort to me. Because she's basically just like trying to blow you off and ignore you. Yeah. Um, so what you can do is you can make a stand to force her to pay attention to you. Or you can pass beneath notice to like try and effectively uh, get her to um, like lower her guard. Um, you can use Rebel Eyes to kind of size up, size her up and try and find like a way to connect to her. Um, you can mm-hmm. use a connection where you can like name drop, maybe say like, look, the counselor told me to talk to you. You're not getting away until I talk to you. Um, yeah, those are kind of your options, I'd say. Okay. Uh, I'll probably stand my ground. Make a stand, okay. Yeah, uh, make a stand, yeah. So in that case, you check against blood. Um, so yeah, so roll two dice and tell me what, uh, which, what each one says. I have a three and a six. A three and a six. Okay, so that's a weak hit. Um, 
So on a weak hit, choose one. Uh, they don't cause you problems. They can't dismiss what you say, or they focus only on you. Uh, which which of those do you want to come true? Mm. They can't dismiss what I say. Okay. Uh, and what do you say to her to make her not dismiss what you say? Is it literally just, I want to be your friend? Yeah, I'm hoping to get the trust. Yeah. So I'm just like, hey, okay. Want to, I want to be your friend. She kind of looks at some of her other friends and says to them, go, go wait by my car. I'll, I'll deal with this. And they uh, all kind of stare at you disapprovingly um, and walk out. Uh, and she kind of like drops the act a bit and she says, look, you seem pretty nice, Athena. Um, and like, I know you're here um, like on a scholarship or something. So the school's probably having you check up on me because of what happened to me and my friends. Is that right? I just like, honesty is the best policy here. And I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so basically we were out shopping, we ditched school and, um, we, uh, uh, some cops came up to us. Um, one of them was named like Torres or something. And he was like getting really aggressive with us. He said we were shoplifting. Um, and like, look at me, do I look like I need to shoplift? Uh, probably not. Exactly. And I told him that, and he said he was going to take us down to the station. So I called my daddy and my daddy called our lawyer and then he backed off. So the school doesn't need to worry about it. My daddy took care of it. Um, and like, you seem nice. So, I mean, it sucks that you have to do whatever you're doing for the school, but, um, yeah, you, you don't need to worry about me. Do you know why Torres would accuse you of shoplifting if you weren't shoplifting? It was really weird. Like, he was, like, he was kind of creepy, you know? Like, you know, he was talking about, like, the way we looked and things like that. You know how some, like, older guys can be sometimes. And um, he backed off, like, right away once, you know, he realized we, like actually you know belonged there so i think he was probably just like you know being a creep do you think he'll be a problem again in the future i mean not for me but like i don't know i mean i'm probably not going to go back to that store anytime soon which store was it uh she names it uh it's like um uh, Rochelle's Short drugs. <laughs> uh, Rochelle's closet. You know, something a, a high end store. Okay, and I guess I can look it up from there. Okay. Um. All right, and then can you describe the cop for me, Torres? Sure. I mean, he looked like a cop. You know, he was um, he was kind of Hispanic looking. Um, he's tall, had a bald head. Um, he had like a weird tattoo on his shoulder. It looked like kind of like a V with a circle around it. It, it was just kind of stuck out to me. It didn't look like, you know, the usual cop tattoos or whatever. Um, yeah, I asked for his badge number and like, he wouldn't give it to me. So sorry, I can't help you out more. Okay. Um, right. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. It was good to hear this. Okay. Um, I don't think you're a shoplifter. Uh, and, and I, I think something fishy is going on. Uh, she nods and says, yeah, I mean, I know the school really only cares about its reputation, but, um, I guess thank you for caring. Uh, I'm glad I smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, and then I, I'll, I'll let her go on her way. But I did manage to speak to her, and I did right. learn some stuff. All right, congratulations.
Yay! It's a rank up. <laughs> uh, you can add her as a weak uh, as a weak contact, a weak covenant, if you like. Oh, okay. I need to figure out what covenant she would be. You don't have to figure out her arcana just yet. You just like uh, once per session, you can say someone is a weak covenant that you meet. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. All right. Okay. So I could see her again. Yeah. We are not on completely bad terms. Okay, cool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, moving right along. Uh, Arsu, you escape from Bathe and Dusters. It is now the <laughs> afternoon. Uh, what do you do next? Now it's time for cartoon animal shenanigans as I try and make my way towards the school by hopping unnoticed onto different modes of transportation. <laughs> uh, Yakety Sax plays in the background. Um, I think, like, you, you, if you want to invest the time, I'm not going to, like, make you roll for it uh, unless you really want to. Um, but, uh, yeah, that sounds more than reasonable to me that you can meet up with Athena uh, by the time it gets to uh, after school evening. Could I make a roll to get there faster? Um, sure. I have time to stake the place out, maybe, or something. Mm -hmm. Three and three. Three and three. Okay. Um, what move would this be? Uh, I'm going to call it... Uh, we're just going to test blood. It's going to be make, make a stand, but it's not going to be quite make a stand. Because... Um, those mechanics don't completely apply uh and they're both above your blood so it's a strong hit so yeah so you get there like essentially right after she finishes talking with this girl uh you uh athena you see uh arsuteraz hop into the scene somehow i don't know how, how does arsuteraz <laughs> enter the school uh so like a bus stops and as people get off you see a bright blue poison dart frog jump out and then start winking at you while waving. I'm sure that this is a school of students. I'm sure some people might recognize Arsu as from the arcade. He's a very distinctive frog. Um, no one really notices Arsu unless Arsu wants to be noticed. Oh, perfect. Even better. It's a talent. Uh, I, I wave back and then forget and then everybody looks at me as if I'm weird for waving at nothing. Uh, th they think you were waving at Melissa. <laughs> oh, even better. <laughs> so it just looks a little bit sad, but that's okay. <laughs> Alright, so now Arsu and I can go on a cool adventure. Uh, I think, was I supposed to report the Melissa encounter to the counselor? Um, yeah, you could or do just that. speak. Okay, so I guess Arsu and I, Arsu follows me, I guess, to the uh, counselor's office where I tell him about how Melissa was not shoplifting, or I don't think she was at least, okay, um, and that somebody else had accused her of it falsely. Uh, he kind of nods and he says, okay, um, well, we appreciate the information. Um, good to know. Uh, yeah, just, you know, keep tabs on that situation. Um, and, uh, yeah, th thank you for checking in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll mark it down in your record here. Uh, and okay. you see he makes a tick in his book, uh, and your school probation uh, progress ticks down by one. Cool. And then since I'm here in the office, I decide to ask the counselor, since you, I know all the staff members, if he's seen a certain teacher lately, um, a Ron, uh, I keep forgetting how to spell his name. Sarver. Sarver. <laughs> oh, uh, if, Ron's, if Sarver's been around. Ron's taking a sabbatical. Don't, don't worry about him. Oh, Why have you have you have you heard anything about him? <laughs> uh, more like I just haven't seen him. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while, and I was curious. He's a professor at, or he's a teacher at school, and I'm a student, <laughs> and I haven't seen him in, you know curious i'm like yeah. rambling uh no yeah he's um yeah he's just he, he he's just taking some time off for his um um book he's writing a book i think 
Yeah. So there's no need to worry. Oh, okay. Will he ever come back? I, uh... Sure. I miss his teaching. (laughs) I mean, it's not like he's dead (laughs) or anything, or missing. (laughs) Why? Why? (laughs) Have Have you heard anything? Uh, I've heard he's such a great teacher that I... I was hoping to have him one day. Yeah. Yeah. He he's he definitely was that. He was a good teacher who is on sabbatical. <laughs> While I'm talking though, is like Arsu doing anything though? Is he like sneaking in or just listening? I figure he's on your shoulder taking notes. And he's oh, like okay. What does sabbatical mean? <laughs> is that like some <laughs> kind of prison or purgatory? <laughs> Nobody uh, ever says that like it's a good thing. <laughs> I will answer Arsu as soon as I'm out of a uh, eye shot of the counselor. So I'm I'm just like, okay. Uh, since the counselor is clearly suspicious of me, and I'm just like, okay, sweet, thanks for your time, and then like walk right out again to talk to Arsu. Okay. <laughs> Figure he's got a little burglar mask, and when he doesn't want to be seen, he puts it over. Or I guess around his eyes. <laughs> I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ars, oh yeah, I guess I have to find sabbatical. But uh, I mean, he is just away for personal. I don't know. Leave. Mm. He's taking a vacation. There we go. Ah, okay, vacation. But he's the guy we squished, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, so humans can lie. Good. Mm-hmm. This is good. Write it down. <laughs> but what should we do now? This is suspicious. I was figuring we could take a look at the records because... Um, there was mention of students disappearing and being kidnapped. And then uh, the student that you talked to got hassled by police for trumped up charges of shoplifting. So maybe we can find some kind of clues in the records. Okay. Currently though, because of the daytime hours, there are still people in the, in the office. Uh, Should I be a distraction? Should we wait until like it's later in the day and then sneak in? I work better at night. All right. So I guess we wait until night. <laughs> okay. Uh, so real I don't quick. Know, where were we? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. While this is all going on, uh, Merrick, do you want Arthur to be doing anything with his afternoon? I did actually think of something. So I'm assuming time is passing not at the same rate for him, but it's right. still been kind of a while. Mm-hmm. So it occurred to Arthur of something that he could do that might be worthwhile. He's going to go and he's going to hang out with Sprite. Mm-hmm. And, or he's going to he's gonna knock on his door or his, his library and be like, hey, uh, I was thinking, you said that you are pretty into information. And I actually do have a pretty good number of just like random little tidbits that you might find, like, semi-valuable or something, and I bet you have the same. So I thought it might be kind of fun to see if we can, to, like, take turns just saying little little bits of info here and there that we think the other might find surprising or interesting or whatever, just to, you know, pass the time, maybe learn a little bit. What do you think? Oh yeah, yeah. That sounds that sounds like a what, what what do humans call it? Um, a game? Yeah, kind of like a little 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 information trading game. Yeah. Little, um. Yeah, I'd be down for that. That so sounds that sounds really fun. I'll and since you already gave us some information, I figure that I'll will I'll like dart and then also end, so you end up with one extra piece, no matter where we like leave off. Okay. Um, it's a deal. Um, so then Archer, 
of the, the quality of information that Arthur is going to go into. So his starting one is, so there's no such thing as a free lunch. And just on like a watch pot never boils, a bird in the hand is worth two in the book, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> All right. Um, he, he finds this absolutely fascinating. Um, I want you to make a quick check for me though. Uh, yeah, it's they, um, the covenant hanging out move, right? Yeah. So you check <laughs> against fealty for this. All right. Four and five. Both should be above. Yeah. Yeah. So a strong hit. Um, so yeah, this he's totally on board with this. Does not realize that you are giving him basically nonsense. Um, <laughs> it's not nonsense. It's just not a hundred percent useful. Right, and yeah. it is what I said it would be, which is tidbits of information. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty useful. Um, he says, "Okay, cool, great. Um, yeah, uh, geez, what do I know um, that would be useful to you?" Um, well, it doesn't have to. Be, it just has to be what he thinks would be yeah. short, useful pieces of information. He says, okay, um, hmm, let me think, let me think. Um, did you know that, um, I, I, I'm having a really hard time come up, coming up with something you, a sprite would know. <laughs> uh, if you want, you could just be, cause like, we don't really know that much about how like castles work and stuff. Oh. He, we could just say that he gives me like a bunch of kind of general information about castles, supernatural stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when it would be handy for me to remember something that Sprite has told me, you can, we can flash back to it or you can be like, Oh, you would know X, Y, Z now because of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah. He basically like tells you a bunch of like little tidbits that like don't really make a whole lot of sense, but like kind of, you you think they will make sense in context eventually. Yeah. Um, a strong hit, bond deepens. Basically, we have rapport now. And mark progress on a project to raise the Covenant's rank. Mm -hmm. um, I don't understand. Do I make up a project now on the sheet? Yes. Uh, okay. So the project might be something like uh, raise um, sun arcana. Um, and it, it's, uh, starts at six, you've marked progress, so it goes to five. Okay. How do you track that? There's two squares here. Uh, the one on the left is the plus, um, which is like, uh, an improvement progress and the minus is if it's a maintenance project progress. So the okay. five goes in the left box. Got it. Um, so then, and then it says next step is that, mm-hmm. Um, How, what do I write there? Well, just one second. I want to see if there's like actually advice for this because I think I know how it works, but um, God, there's a lot of start project. No, really? Um, I think it's kind of like whatever you think you need to do to kind of advance that project next. So like, um, what do you think would help you make more of a connection with Sprite? More info exchanges, I would say. Bones. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. And you just like write that down. Okay. Um, also, it says trigger their hangout move. Yeah, so that was kind of what you were getting at. Um, and what the Sun's Hangout move is, is when you spend time with a summit at any point in the conversation, you can ask them one of these questions. So mm -hmm. if you like, you can like ask them, you, you can ask one of those questions. Uh, let's imagine that I don't have whatever the Sun's thing is in front of me. Right okay. Uh, the questions are, who's really behind blank... What's the connection between blank and blank? Who's keeping blank a mystery? Oh, um, uh, the question I will go with actually, what is the connection between 
me and that jail we broke out. <laughs> hmm. Like why? How we didn't really we kind of just moved on from it, but I don't know why we were there or how we got there mm -hmm. or who put us there. He kind of like thinks that over a little bit, and he says, "Okay, well, I don't want this to sound super like insulting, but um, you seem like a guy who kind of takes it easy, right?" I like to think so. Right. Yeah, and that's not always a bad thing. I mean, you know, you got to rest sometimes, and you know, there's no need to always be go go go. But um, sometimes with humans, if they uh, they kind of get really apathetic, like they kind of like stop caring about stuff. Um, they kind of open themselves up to the castle, and uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure that's what happened to you, but um, just from talking with you a little bit, that would be maybe my guess. Um, and then the uh, castle's vassal or their avatar essentially pulled you into their uh, their prison, their their castle shard. Um, because of that apathy. You mean that goop guy? Yeah, him. I didn't even know that goop guy, though. Yeah, but he knew you. I don't think I even went to his school, did I? <laughs> no. It's weird, yeah. right? Hmm. It's like he was, like, looking for a particular kind of person, but, um... I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure he was 100%, like... Like, I think there might be... So, the castle is, like, structured like... Um, um, what's, a, what's a good way of thinking of it? Um, uh, a cake. Do, do, do humans still have cake? Oh, yeah. Right. So, like, you got, like, the thing at the bottom of the cake, right? That, like, holds up the rest of it? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what that guy was. And then there was probably, like, another piece of cake on top of that cake with some icing in between and like that other piece of cake told your piece of cake to go get people like you or like that piece of cake tells the other cake what to do. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, sure. <laughs> and there's probably like the icing on the outside, right? Like that's the highest piece of the cake with like the little roses and things like that made of sugar. And, um, that, like, tells all the cake what to do. Hmm. Personally, I like the base part of the cake better, because that's, like, more filling. It's where more of the flavor is. Like, if you just eat the rose frosting by itself, it just kind of tastes like... Right. It's useless. Frosting. All it does is, like, tell the rest of the cake what to do. Like, the actual good part of the cake is the part that holds the rest of it up, right? I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Maybe the maybe the whole rest of the cake should have uh, some words with the the frosting roses about who should really be calling the shots around here. Maybe the maybe the maybe the cake base should create a uh, cake union. I, f I feel like you're like doing that thing humans do with like um, where a thing isn't a thing but it means a thing, a metaphor, right? That's what you were doing. I think. Was Unless it? you mean that this place is literally commanded by cakes. <laughs> is there an actual cake Oh my call? god. You're, you're right. I did a metaphor. Because this isn't literally a cake. Wow. You should come back some other time, human. Uh, teach me more metaphors. I know just the place to get some of those. Awesome. And we'll do metaphors? just that. Great. Looking forward to it. Um, and actually, wait, he might, he's in there for, yeah, all right, so I'll, I'll come back with, back to Sprite on a future day of that, so that's my afternoon, mm -hmm. is it now evening, or they're doing, no, they're going to have their adventure. So, uh, <laughs> we, we are now progressing towards the evening phase, do you all want to meet up before you go do whatever your adventure is? I, I told them to just go do that thing. That's true. So it's up oh. to the, the, them when they come back, I guess. Yeah. I was going to suggest that maybe we can have... Well, no, this would get... Whatever. We'll we'll figure it out later. The point is, it's adventure time. Okay. 
Yes. Uh, do you guys want to so, take a quick break in the uh, out of game just to like get some water and stuff? We've been going for about two hours and fifteen minutes. I mean, I'm not. I'm going to be on break pretty soon, regardless, because I'm not in the next scene. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay. Well, if if you guys just want to keep playing, we can just keep playing. I've got until about three o'clock. Okay. Well, let, oh, let's just power yeah. through then. Yeah. Finish this. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we progress towards evening uh, with e uh, Arsu and Athena uh, having an adventure. What? How do you guys begin your adventure? Uh, let's see. I like went back home and then came back and I'm wearing like, I don't know, an all black outfit because I think this is what we do when we break into schools. <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> and uh, Arsu would have like stuck around at the school listening to everyone getting picked up, picking up on the secrets. Mm -hmm. um... uh, I brought supplies and they're like, these bobby pins where I heard you can break locks with them, but I have no idea how to do that. Okay. I just brought them. <laughs> Arsu thinks it's just a very strange human key. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're waiting until everybody leaves part, and then it looks like by now, people will have all gone home, hopefully. Um, yeah, at about five o'clock, we'll say, like, all the like school clubs have gotten out. All the kids are gone. All the teachers are gone. Um, they probably have at least like a janitor or someone like that, that just like kind of goes around the school, cleans up at least one janitor, maybe two, maybe a security guard that kind of like patrols the school just cause like generally private schools don't want to be broken into after hours. Um, <laughs> So uh, those are, but like everyone else has gone home for the day. Okay. Uh, perfect. I'm assuming this is like a school on the, it's only one story, so everything's on ground level. Uh, no, let's say it's like two stories. Darn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And the counselor's office is on the second floor? Uh, probably, yeah. All right. Uh... Yeah, our Stu can just walk right in because I guess no one will notice. I have to like... He never left. He's still in there. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, I just have to sneakily make my way through while dodging janitors and the security officer. Mm -hmm. I've been here the whole time. Mm -hmm. I'm like humming Mission Impossible while I'm doing this. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, this is definitely passed beneath notice. Uh, so you can go mm -hmm. ahead and check that. Okay. Uh, roll two dice again. Mm -hmm. Oh man, a four and a two. A four and a two. Okay, so a weak hit um, on pass beneath notice because you don't have that much infamy. Um, so on a weak hit, you pick two. Uh, you have to leave the situation right now or be discovered. Uh, someone's suspicious of you and you won't be able to dodge them next time. You get separated from your allies or pulled out of position. I'll take someone as suspicious of me right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you kind of like, as you're missioning, uh, mission impossibling into the school, which basically involves finding a door that someone hasn't locked yet, opening it, like dodging behind lockers, maybe going into a bathroom or something like that. Um, like the janitor sees you like close a door really quickly. Um, or, but like, just figures that it was probably just like uh, something broke on that door. Um, but uh, the, the a, a janitor is now searching for you. Uh, but you managed to meet up with Arsu in front of the counselor's office. Right, I made it stressfully. Uh, so Arsu is still inside the office, right? He, he never left the office. Uh, what do you think? Oh, no, I'm still outside, because I would have gone outside to hear everyone talk and hang okay. out until... So, so that means the door to the counselor's office is locked then, huh? Um, probably, yeah. Yes. Uh, I jam all my bobby pins in there. <laughs> nice. 
uh, uh, but I don't know how to actually unjimmy it, so I guess uh, it doesn't actually open. Probably mm, not. Out of curiosity, no. can my uh, can my cool key phone do it? Uh... I like take out my key phone and I like tap it to the lock because <laughs> I'm just like, how do you work? Mm hmm. Um. Hmm. Let me think about that. Uh, the key kind of like uh, distorts a little bit um, and you get the impression that like this key like can do this for you but there will be a cost to it somehow mm. do I know do I get the, like, what sort of cost uh, no because it's just a key glitching out like it's not a physical object ah all right, I turn to Arsu. Arsu, do you have any idea how to open uh, this door? I sure do. And then I try and wriggle my way under the door jam. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Why did you do that earlier? You seem like you're having a good time using your keys on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Trying different keys. You seem to be having a blast. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to say that's probably within your ability to do because you're literally a small little frog. Um, gotcha. So yeah, you wriggle under the door jam um, and uh, can kind of like basically manipulate the door enough to get it open uh, and into the counselor's office. Nice. So I enter and I close the door again. We and I it. lock it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, so now, now we're here. No one else is in have to go look the stuff or the records so i guess i start with the actual counselor that i talked to for his papers so i'm mm -hmm. opening all his drawers to see if there's anything of interest um uh, sure uh do i have to roll anything for that uh, nah um not really it's more just like kind of you're just it, it, it'll take time um mm -hmm. And uh, there's the main risk is like a janitor finds you and like, what is he going to do about it? Um, so it takes you a little while, but you're able to pull out um, a few important looking documents. Um, what what are you mainly trying to find out? Mm, apparently there were records of students who were. Uh... Shoot, where did I write that? <laughs> going missing? Yes, going missing. So I'm hoping to see if there's something about that, or if there's anything about Ron Sabard. Those um, are the two things we are hoping to find. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say you can you can you really only have time for one. So, uh, mm -hmm. what you find is you find Harry's file uh, for Harry Roach, uh, your mm -hmm. uh, erstwhile companion, um, and his file. Uh, it basically says like good kid, strong sense of justice. Uh, it has a lot blacked out on it. Um, and then at the bottom it says um, uh, transferred to uh, youth rehabilitation center um, in uh, uh, Orleans Parish. And it has like a date on it. Uh, and it says school approval. Uh, and it has like the signature um, of the vice principal of your school, uh, and it says like transferring officer, uh, and it has and it says um, officer. I gave him a name. I gave him a last name. Did I give him a first name yet? Uh, John Torres. Whoa. Plot twist. John Torres. Transfer. Uh, and right. after you find I, this I file this and kind of, yeah, after you find this file and like start uh, like reading it over, you hear like a knock at the door. Like, hey, uh, is someone in there? No. <laughs> hey, oh, open this door right now! And someone like starts like jiggling the door handle. Uh oh. Uh... We should have the key if they're supposed to be here, right? He says, "Wait a second. I have the keys to this door. I'm a janitor. And he, like, starts... He, and you hear the jangling of keys. Uh-oh. I'm um, ready, and I squat down into, like, a combat stance. I guess we have... 
Is that what we're doing? I was going to push a table and barricade the door. You could but also how do we that. leave? Hmm? There's if also a bar- window. <laughs> oh, that works too. I'm ready. I, yeah, I got, there's a window. Uh, do I want to try to climb out the window? <laughs> uh, you know, we, we got to get out of here. I can't be, I can't be seen. <laughs> I will now add to my probation. All right. Okay, I like open the window and hope no one else is out there who who can see this. Um, Thankfully, there is not. And I, okay, all right, I I start to climb down. Uh, Hopefully there's like a cool pipe thing, I I guess, I can follow. uh, Yeah, Um, let's go ahead and check your blood real quick. All right. Okay, I roll two... I got a three and a five. A five. Okay, we hit. Um, you just, uh, you actually, like, you kind of, like, uh, twist your ankle a little bit as you hit the ground uh, after you climb down, uh, and you take a minor wound. Uh, but other than that, you're fine. All right. Where do I mark minor wound? Okay, there it is. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm hobbling out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is our? Did I take do? the? I took the folder too, though, right? I have the. Folder. Yeah, yeah, you got the folder. Cool. What does our Sudaraz do? He jumps out the window using frog skills. <laughs> he frogs <laughs> down the window, all frog-like. Okay, and the two of you I'm complaining disa- how I wish I had my wings. <laughs> Fair, um, and the two of you disappear into the night. Okay. Uh, and it now becomes late night. Uh, what would you guys like to do tonight? Or wait, um, uh, Merrick, did you have anything you wanted to do in the evening? Um, I feel like I probably should, but I don't know. Because like the thing is, I can't. Since I also I still don't know how time works. Mm-hmm. In I I like can't leave because. <laughs> Like they said, they'd be just be right back. Why would I think they wouldn't be just right back? Right. And also, it hasn't been that long for me, mm-hmm. as far as I'm aware. You can um, you can continue to slack off and like do a little bit of homework, and we'll count that as you like keeping up appearances if you want. Well, the other the other thing I was going to ask, which I feel like this is a bad idea, but I wanted to ask about it. If time moves differently in and out. Can they do something? Can it be late night for them, but it's evening for me? <laughs> um, as long as we get back on the t- the same time scale by Tuesday morning, I'd be okay with that. Okay. I feel like that would be, in the short term, that would be like the easiest thing for it, but it could get, I could see how it could get like messy if we don't keep good track of it in the future. Fair. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. I would suggest that their late night just be my evening and then I'll do something else after we get back or something like that. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means that we can all be reporting back together. Um, Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, uh, Arsu and, uh, Athena are going to head back to the hideout, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Limping along. Limping along. Uh, you arrive back in the hideout. Um, it feels like, yeah, to, uh, to you, it doesn't feel like that long has passed, uh, Arthur. Um, but the mm-hmm. other two, you know, clearly time has passed. Uh, they yeah. are wearing different clothes, or at least Athena is. She's wearing all black and carrying a file folder. Um, huh. Did you, did you guys rob the place <laughs> what else were we going to do <laughs> i mean could you have yes. asked about the the teacher i thought that's all what that you were really going in there to do but humans oh, lie <laughs> yes <laughs> and fair enough well so what'd you guys find out okay i like bring out the folder and i like lay it i lay it on the table and i'm just like look at this um 
and then I point to Harry's name. All right. Uh, mm, and then I guess I have to talk about how I was talking to a girl at school who was accused of like uh, a a crime by a cop named Torres. And then look whose name this is, and I point to uh, the transfer's name, mm-hmm. who is Torres. Okay, I'm just like these. There's a connection here. Huh. But, I think that was the name of the of the cop that bothered me once. Also, a cop bothered you, Arthur. <laughs> when? Yeah, he was just like, you know, he was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I was like, "This." And he was like, "Well, don't stay out late." And then he went away. <laughs> well, let me catch you doing this again. <laughs> what were you doing? Walking. Anyway. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah. Arthur will pretend that he has the ability to put two pieces together analytically, even though he doesn't really, and just sort of be like, hmm, I see. So, uh, what do you think the significance of this is? There is a cop out there who is targeting students, and we know for sure this cop has targeted two students, a student in my uh, class named Alyssa, and now uh, Harry. But I don't know why. Uh, no, let me also... I also learned where Harry could be, since he's supposed oh. to have been transferred to, what did I write down? The Youth Rehabilitation Center in the Orleans Parish. That seems... I'm surprised you didn't lead with that information. <laughs> <laughs> I was too focused on what caught my eye, which is the first thing. <laughs> um, well, uh, if we know where he is, and... Oh, wait, wait. We're, we're trying to figure out, in order to teleport in there, because we probably can't break in there in the real world, we gotta... To the, get to the shard version, we have to attune... We have to figure out who is the boss of the place and how they see themselves, I think, is what it was. Um, Do we think that that means... I I direct this to Arsu. Do you think that the boss has to be, like, the literal boss of the place? Like, do we got to find out who the manager of the juvenile facility is? You still with us, Byron? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all gone terribly wrong. Did I miss a problem? Yeah, I was asking, What do we have to... Do you think that the boss of... Or the... the do you think the vassal of the castle has to be also the boss of the actual place? Like, do, in the real world do we got to figure out who the manager of the corrections facility is i think we might have to but we could just follow we could use this police officer to get us what we need to get into that place oh okay how well he's got he's got a castle shard um so maybe we could find what we need in his well, in his mind, really. And then we can take that to get what we need from the prison. How do you know he has a castle shard? All humans have a castle shard. All? Go. Oh. I have a castle shard? Arthur have a castle shard? Yeah, you can see right. a little bit of it in the hotel. Um, Whoa. Alright. So how do we get into his castle shard, then? Well, I'm not too sure how humans can do it, but I would probably have to meet him and probably touch him with my key first. Okay, so we need a way to meet with... He's like a cop, though. Yeah. Um, What if if you just... Wait, but you're a frog. What if you just, like, sneak in to his place while he's asleep or something? (laughs) I put on the little burglar... (laughs) 
<laughs> but do we know where he lives? You can't send a frog to jail. <laughs> I mean, if somebody sent frog a frog jail. to jail in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where we met. <laughs> it was in frog jail. <laughs> In the real world, you can't send a frog to jail. <laughs> this world is so strange. There's not even a jail. For me. I can do anything. <laughs> there frog are frog. no laws for frogs. There's no yeah. Frogs are above the law. In the frogs real world. can commit infinite crime. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, how involved is that operation going to be? I mean, we have to find the uh, cop, and then we have to send Arsu after the cop. Next we time, just, we yeah, we just find we didn't just like following people's probably not that hard. Basically, we have to find him first to follow him. Well, how did how did the cop find you? He was just like patrolling around, I guess. So all oh. we have to do is that again, and it'll summon him. I mean, maybe. We certainly give it a shot. I I am pretty good at just trolling, so I'm down for for this. Uh, this sounds like an operation that plays to my strength. Where are you walking? Where were you walking before? We could uh, we could just meet that area again. Bus stop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, it was really in just sort of. It was just like around school. It was not anywhere exciting, honestly. <laughs> Okay. It is late night, though. Um, I don't know if this plan is going to proceed now in the middle of the late night, or is it something for a different day? Yeah. I'm not um, even sure I sleep. <laughs> I'm going to make sure as hell to tell you to sleep. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess we'll, tear, we'll do this tomorrow. Um... Mm -hmm. But now we have a plan, even though... Yeah, yeah, we have a plan. Uh, yeah, the plan is to get the frog onto the cop. <laughs> Operation Frog Hope we cop. see the cop again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then Arsu's gonna grab the shard from there? I'm gonna link my key to his castle shard. Mm, and okay. then we can get into it from our hotel. Okay, cool. So that is our our plan then. Me. Anything else? Um, yeah. Should Does anyone we... know anything to do about twisted ankles? <laughs> no. Untwisted. <laughs> that is a great idea. Why didn't I think of it? <laughs> You can but, use my lovely pads and um, pond if you want. Ooh. For, how, how would I do that? That's a pond. You just you, you sit in it and it's great. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. <laughs> I just sit on the side and then put my feet into the pond. Hey, this is pretty nice. <laughs> Your foot feels nice. a little like bit a better. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. Uh, and then I think anything else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it sounds like you guys wrap up your meeting there, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, uh, we progress to late night. It seems like you guys are mostly going to go home and go to bed, probably, or. I don't know. What what are your guys' plans? Um Yeah, I if I have since I have a, a late night thing, I guess still, I mm -hmm. will um spend that to realize that somehow I lost an entire day in what appeared to only be a few hours to me or no, like 3 days. Yeah, essentially. Uh, wig out a little bit and then start frantically doing more homework <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh shit oh shit fair fair um, and also get the assignments that I missed from other people 
Mm -hmm. Makes for, sense. For tomorrow. So I overall end up spend, having spent, I guess, two sections keeping up appearances, even though I ditched class. I don't know if that counts. Um, <laughs> I'm going to count it just because it's in keeping with, like, because the rule isn't, like, keeping up appearances, like, strictly uh, for who, like, there's no, like, default keeping up appearances. It's just, like, behaving as you normally would if you weren't, like, doing castle shit, effectively. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's why for Tina, like, talking to that girl because someone told her to do it, that still counts. Uh, only, like, really breaking into the school and doing other stuff at late night, you know, really counts against her. Um, for Arsu, I, I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna think about that one. Um, I guess doing frog things is how he keeps up appearances. Probably be like my job back in the metaverse. We invert it. Oh, so yeah. like trading information is probably keeping up appearances and not trading information and just like burgling people in the mundane world would be messing it. <laughs> That's a good idea. I like that. Okay. Uh, well, it's 2.45. Um, this seems like a pretty good place to leave, leave off. We've gone through an entire day. You guys have 